What's up everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic. And this is a very weird place to start because we're not doing a normal build today. I know we said we were going to do the Mercer Largo, but we're doing something a little bit different. Today, I'm going to do a get started with the car editor guide. Now, there are a few ways to get to the car editor. One way through Steam, which I'll show you in a moment. But if you have the quality of life mod, you can actually get to it from the main menu. As you can see here, I have this lovely selection that says car editor. If I just click on this, it'll open us up into the car editor. And there we have it. We are loaded into the car editor and we've got the FMW Roadster loaded up in front of us. We're going to make some changes to this today. Nothing too permanent. We're just going to play around and see what kind of things we can do just so I can show off to you guys a little bit how I use the car editor. I'm not going to say it's the best way or the easiest way or the simplest or anything like that. It's just what I do in the car editor. We're not going to dive into everything. There is a lot of detailed explanations that are needed here but i've just shown you how to get into the car editor if you have the quality of life mod from the main menu so here's a quick clip of how to get there from the steam library menu some of you might be asking how do i get to the car editor very simple if you're on steam in fact i only know it available through steam anyway but on steam you just come to your library here on steam click play and then just click launch car editor and click play again and it will load you straight in to the car editor there we go. See, it's very simple to get into the car editor. But before you do any of that, before you get into the car editor, what you need to do is you need to create your own config. You can see this is the FMW Roadster VM edition because I've already created a config for it. Don't worry, we will be jumping in to show you that one in just a second. But while I'm here, I'm going to show you quickly how to maneuver around. You want to Use your mouse, obviously. Um, if you try and move anywhere right now, you'll see nothing works. I can't actually get around. What you have to do is you have to click and hold the right mouse button and then use your W, A, S, and D keys to move you around in there. Nice and simple. You can also use E to go down and Q to go up on there as well. You'll be able to see you can get all the way around with all of the keys. You just have to hold down the right mouse button as you do it. So there we go. Nice and easy. But let's get stuck in and let's see how we go about creating our own config so we can play around with it inside the car editor. Before you get started with anything in the car editor, you are going to need to make yourself a file to work on. So let's go in and figure out how to do that. As you can see, I'm already in my Car Mechanic Simulator folder. What I'm going to do is open up the Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 data, streaming assets, cars, and then you can see all of the cars. Let's pick something at random. Let's go for an FMW, especially with the BMW's DLC coming out very soon. So if we just go for the FMW Roadster, this is the screen we need to be on. You can see there is one, two configs and two body configs to match up. So what you want to do is you just click on whichever config you want to base yours on. Copy and paste it. Control C and Control V. Then get rid of the copy. And add in the next number in the sequence, 0, 1, and obviously the next one is 2. There's that done. And then you want to do the same with the body config as well. Control C, Control V, and make sure that they are the same in the number sequence. Body config 2 goes with config 2. And then just to make sure you've really finished it off, open up config 2, car version name, this line just here. Click on there and type in whatever you want. We're just going to go VM edition. There we go, VM edition, and we're going to save that. That is how you set up for playing around with your base game cars in the car editor, if you have access to the car editor. So we've done that one. Let's just double check we've saved it. Make sure that's saved in there. Now, if you want to do the mods, you have to go a slightly different way. So I'm just going to back up out of this, back into this page here. And as you can know, I want to go back a little bit further than this, don't I? I want to go back to here, Steam, uh, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Workshop, Content. And then I know that this number here is for Car Mechanic Simulator. So I'm going to open that one there. And this is all of the mods I have got in Car Mechanic Simulator from the Steam Workshop. Let's just open one of them. What have we got? This is the new Mazda RX-7 by Golly. There we go. If we wanted to make a config from this, it's exactly the same way. Copy and paste whichever one you want to work on. We'll do... We'll just go config four. So control C, control V. Get rid of all the numbers. Make sure it's the next one in the sequence, which is a five. And then you want to take body config, the one that matches preferably. Copy and paste that one back in there. 
get rid of all the lettering and make sure it's the next one in the number sequence and then just open up the one you just created car version name again we're just going to do vm edition hit save on that one and that's all you need to do for the setup so now let's get back to the car editor it's nice and easy really isn't it when you think about it you don't have to do that much to get to this point here but you do always want to make sure you create your own config so you don't mess around with the base game ones especially when they update the games because these tend to get reset back to their normal versions anyway so do be careful with that one same with the mods whenever a mod is updated sometimes if you went over one that already exists when the mod gets updated you will then just it will respect back to how it was before speaking of mods how do you find the car you want to work on inside the car editor it is nice and simple we did obviously set up the rx4 or whichever one it was i apologize golly if i got that wrong but just click this drop down here and this is a list of every car in the game whether that be your mods as you can see lots of them down at the bottom dlc cars up here now normally I don't think this is actually here. I think this is part of the quality of life mod. So if you don't have that, you might not see the DLC symbol showing up. Also, this info page is through the quality of life mod. So is this here and this here and some of the extra parts here as well. So do bear that in mind. Yours might not look completely the same as mine. But let's go and find that RX4. There we go. Made by Golly there. We get that one loaded up. In we go. And you can see. There we go. It's finally loaded in. We've ended up upside down, span all the way around. But never mind. And if I click on this lower drop down box, you'll be able to see the one we created earlier, the VM edition, just in there. If it ever loads, go on. There we go. And as you can see, we copied the config 4 and pasted it back in. So this RX4 will be exactly the same as ours is as it stands at the moment. It does take a little while to load. But there we go. You can see these, those two models are identical because we literally just copied and pasted. But we're not going to play around with that. I just wanted to show you that that's how it works, both for normal and mod cars. Let's go back up to our FMW. Where are we? Roadster. In we go. Click on you. Let you load in. Nice and easy. You see, sometimes the law cars load a lot quicker than the mod cars. Now, the first thing I always like to play around with, and I don't even know if this one's got any options, so we'll find out, is I go to the tuning options. In we go there. First thing you've got in this lovely list of things to do is you do have the livery options. So all of the liveries that are preset in your files for this, whether they be from the workshop, from the base game or anything like that, there's only two. You can see that's where they show up on there. Nice and simple. Now, if you set one in there and save it, that does become a default for that particular model. So I'm not going to do that. Next thing, do we have any bumper options? We do. We have three bumper options. So obviously you can click the drop down and change it. That didn't seem to change anything. Okay, or you can scroll through the arrows. I'm just going to swap car a second while I double check because I know one that definitely has, and that is the Edgewood Hellcat because we built it in the last episode. I've gone too far. Edgewood Hellcat. We just go on to here, drop this one down into, well, it doesn't matter which one we go to, but if we just go into tuning, uh, go on to hoods because I know this has got some hoods. Click across one. Oh, it is working for some reason. All of the bumpers on the road start are exactly the same. I don't know if that's a bug or an issue or anything like that. But as you can see, you can drop it down and select or you can just scroll through them. Now, empty only comes up as an option if you do have the quality of life mod. But you can do this without the quality of life mod anyway. You will have to change it. If I just scroll down to the bottom here, body config X dot txt file. That's what we created earlier. Body config four for the RX seven body config two uh, for the fmw but if you go into that file and then to remove the body part for example we're using hood here if you go and change that file to hood equals empty in a little section which i'll show you in just a second that will make it so the hood is empty uh what else do we have down here we can ignore that part and we're going to ignore the bottom part as well we only want this one here so if you did want the file to be empty in a config here's what you need to do we're back in the files. Let's see how to make a body part go empty or invisible. We're back in our FMW Roadster, as you can see there. We're going to open body config 2, which was the config we created. Make sure you always edit the right one. And if you want to make something invisible or change it to version 2 or whatever it needs to be, you just need to add in this line of text right here, exactly like that. Squared brackets, the word tuning in lowercase, squared bracket, close. And then all you need to do is you go hood equals empty full. Make sure this is in full caps locks. I can't see my keyboard. There we go. Hood equals empty. 
We're going to save that one there. Uh, we're going to go back into our car editor. There we go. Hidden screen behind me. We do definitely want to make sure we're back in that FMW, wherever you've gone, Roadster. When it loads, there we go. Nice and easy. Go back into the VM edition, and it probably won't be right at the moment, but if you click reload config files, only available with the quality of life mod, otherwise you will have to close the car editor and fully reopen it again, back to the Steam at workshop menu, that kind of thing. But if we click reload config files, it should load back up all our config files. It brings us back into the first one again, so we want to make sure we go back to the VM edition. And now the hood is completely empty from that car. It is completely missing. And if we want to add it back in, we just delete that line of text. And if you want to make it an alternative one, you would do hood equals hood and then whatever the number is. For example, on these bumpers that aren't seem to working, you would go bumper underscore front equals bumper underscore two underscore three for whichever one you wanted. And that will work the same for any part that is changeable on any car, whether it's a mod, law, base game or whatever. Do we even have alternate tail lights for this one or will they even change? It says we've got them, but they're not changing. I think my game might be a tad bit broken. Uh, let's go back to our Edgewood Hellcat, wherever you are, because I know you've got changeable parts and you are definitely making my life a little bit easier. We do not have a config that I have made, so we won't be saving anything we do to this one. We'll go back to that roadster in a minute. I just want to show you a little bit more about these parts. Now, obviously... This doesn't have optional front bumpers, but it does have optional headlights. Where are we? Headlight left. There we go. If I just click across here, you can see it changes from the round to the square, square to the circle. And then obviously that empty one leaves a big gaping hole, which you probably don't want. But it's that simple to change the parts. You can even use the drop down menu. Uh, but if you do change it to three, you do need to make sure you go back to that config file and type in headlight underscore left equals headlight underscore left three. So, so it will change to that one permanently nice and simple but now let's get back to our little roadster and start playing around with a few other options there we go we are back with our beautiful roadster and our empty hood as we set up earlier nice and simple let's just start having a look at some of the options we can do so we're going to start off up here we're going to click main and that's just going to tell you all of the information about the car i would never ever ever suggest editing any of this Unless you really want to make a micro car, bring that scale all the way down. But again, not something I would ever actually recommend. Into suspension and the next one along. Now, as you can see from here, we are currently going to be looking at all of the suspension items, but we can't see them. One thing you can do is just hit this little green tick so you don't have to see the body anymore. It is nice and simple, but we want to not be able to see the body because we're going to be playing with the suspension. So let's go down and get in here and take a look. Um, we'll just swing around to this side. We're going to start with this central cross member section, as you can see in the middle of the screen, nice and simple. Do you want to change that to something different? You have a full load of drop down menus. Obviously, everything that says front center is stuff that can be used in that front center shot slot. It gets down to here and then you go to front right and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's just go. What are we on at the moment? Front center powered two. So we change it to front center powered three. You'll be able to see that it's changed a few little pieces, the positioning of this center drive axle in here and a few things like that. So let's just carry on scrolling across and get something wildly different. In fact, that's straight away front center powered short three completely wildly different. What you get in this one is that. I can't even get in to see it anywhere. There we go. This type of a central se section for your powered front wheels which you then need to change some other things to match up with it if you wanted to use it. And then this one's obviously got a miniature drive shaft, which will connect into one of the 4x4 engines. So we'll come back to that a little bit later on when we're talking about the engines. But what else can we play around with? Uh, let's just put it into... Let's go for the F-type Jag front setup. Very similar. Still has that centerpiece there, but you'll have to use different arms to connect into it. Something we'll cover in a little bit. Let's go for another one. Uh, let's just go for front center empty too. You take this one out, you can see it removes all of that central cross member, but you do still get your sway bar at the front here. One thing you don't get is a steering rack. Oh no, there is a steering rack. It's just hidden inside the car a little bit. So you'd have to change inside the engine. So you'd have to change your front suspension sections. But there we go. Play with that to your heart's content. Find one you like and everything like that. We're going to go back to powered two, so ours all line up again. And then we're going to go to front left. Now, front left basically cuts everything from here into that knuckle, out into that bottom arm, and it will change. So 
we're currently on uh, it says front right because it's matched mirrored both sides but whatever so we go front one front right basic that is the front right basic as you can see actually does line up with the steering rack the sway bar and all of that that actually looks absolutely perfect and i'm so surprised by that but never mind and then if we just scroll on through you can see it's changed a lot of this middle bit position of of the inner and outer tie rod so that no longer matches up with the steering rack so you do have to pay attention when you're doing it if you keep going through you'll change it again see that one's bottom loaded instead of top loaded and things like that so you find one that you like for example i tend to like the angled springs a little bit more than the straight up springs so we'll go find some of them there we go double wishbone quite self-explanatory really and you can see the double wishbone automatically fits in with that front suspension cross member the top one does just float because that's how it goes in this game but we've changed it all now we want to make sure everything lines up properly for example our sway bar does actually match in with the sway bar end link and our inner and outer tie rod do go with that steering rack but i don't like the sway bar positioning here so what i would do in that situation is i'd go back to our front center powered um and i would change it to one that i did like obviously it's difficult when it's powered we're not actually looking at powered we just want to go for front center straight up there you go where's our sway bar it is connecting and there we go that would be a lot better for us to use in that scenario so just find whichever one works best for you and looks the best in your opinion it really is that simple but as you see sway bar lines up goes all underneath and then on this side the inner and outer tie rod do match in and go in to that steering rack. And then obviously once you've found one you like, you just go and mirror it on the other side and it'll all be perfect. So if we just go to our drop down, we're going to go front, right, double wishbone without a number. And there we go. Now their two sides are both perfectly the same, looking absolutely fantastic in our beautiful little FMW Roadster. And now on to the rear it is identical as you can see rear center rear left and rear right so again drop down you've got your rear center whatever you want it to be obviously this one here is unpowered no drive shaft running through the middle there makes perfect sense so let's as we're going to swap the engine anyway in a moment let's pick a powered rear center we could just go straight up for the leaf powered which obviously gives you the leaf springs on there but you can see everything's all doubled up and weird at the moment because the rear left and rear right are in the wrong setting so if we come into that and we just go straight up rear right solid that's the one we were already on so let's just go through and find one that works with this and gets rid of all of them arms we definitely don't want the delorean ones i know that so we keep going through there rear right drum that's given us all the top arms again which we don't want we don't want we don't want there we go now we're into like the leaf powered one so if we look onto there it is that simple nice and easy to set up you've obviously got uh, rear right solid disc powered putting a disc brake on it if you go to the next one along it's drum powered with a drum brake and i do believe we can still select a couple more i oh, know now we're on the actual tk aftermarket stuff so we'll ignore that but you can see there's still a few options you can play around with you can still set it up to something you like but you've just got to get it all matched up so let's just get this one back to uh something that's normal uh what did we want we wanted rear right oh i've lost it rear right solid disc power there we go that's what we'll leave it on for the moment it's not going to be the right setup but you can do whatever you want that's the whole point of it you can play around and do that literally whatever you want with it so there you go brief little introduction of how to set up a rear suspension and the front suspension now we're going to go back to the outside of the car so we're going to bring our body back we're going to swing around to the side because now we're going to play with the right height and things like that as we scroll down to the bottom of this end this setting this mode here You've obviously got front axle start. And just so I don't lose it, I'm going to copy that number so that we can play around with it and reset it back to where it was. Now, if you just click and hold on float value and move it, you'll see you are moving all of the wheels. As you can see, it's just left and right. So if you wanted it tucked further in the front of the rear wheel, you would do that. Don't worry, we can fix the rear wheel in a minute nice and easily. So you just tuck that all the way in there kind of thing, however you want it to line up. I always tend to go for mine roughly a bit more forward than central if I am playing with them, but I don't always play with them, to be honest. We'll leave that there and we'll fix everything in a minute. In fact, I'm just not going to save it, so it doesn't matter. But then if you want to have that move your rear wheel now, you just go to wheel base and do the same thing. And that will just move your rear wheel. So you could put it behind the car if you really wanted to do something stupid like that. Not that I would recommend it, but you can do it. I tend to just, again, put it slightly towards the back of the wheel well. Just whatever you think looks good, whatever you think nice is nice, 
will probably work. You see that wheelbase is now totally off because I've edited it. But if we were carrying on and doing a bit more, we would end up with something totally different. Now, front track is a nice and simple one. Literally, it is how far the wheel sticks out, left to right. But when you are doing this, I'm just going to click to hide the body for a second. It does completely scale all of this front suspension. So do bear in mind, if you've already fixed some clipping, you may have to go back and readjust some clipping if you've edited the front track. But as you can see, it's just how far the wheel comes left and right in, into and out of the car. So we're just going to leave it out for a little bit. I'm going to go back onto show body. You can see we've made it stick out quite a way without adding any ET. Again, something we will cover a little bit later. And the rear track is exactly the same. Again, if we just go so we don't show body and you go to the rear track, you see it does scale that cross member, that central section in there as well. Again, we're just going to pick that one out and leave it because it's a little bit fun to make it a little bit wider as it stands at the moment. Then height front and height rear. I'm pretty sure that's self-explanatory. Lower it down, raise it up. Do whatever you want. That doesn't scale anything else apart from where obviously the wheels sit. If you do something ridiculous, they will clip through the floor a little bit trying to keep the car flat so the angle will change so we leave that there and do the height rear and bring that up you can see it's leveling out that front suspension cross member because we're effectively we're jacking the car up not what we're going for so let's slam it back down let's get this all the way slammed down and then all the way slammed back down again in we go and we're just going to sort of bring it down to a relatively sensible level as you can see we'll play around with the track a little bit later if we needed to keep aligning up there's a lot of doing one bit and then moving another bit if you're playing in the car editor now front spring length if i just go we're going to hide the bodywork again and uh, we're going to swing around to the back where we can see it a little bit better but i am also going to change the springs because spring length doesn't really affect these angular springs on the double wishbone as you can see it just stretches things out but it all clips through whereas if we change it to Front left, um, I don't know what we want here. Uh, let's just go front right one. Yeah, there we go. That's the spring I want. Now, when you adjust the spring length on these, you actually get an effect that helps you. So, yeah, you can bring that all the way up and make it ridiculous, especially if you've got something really jacked up off the floor, like a monster truck or something like that. You can make these springs absolutely massive. But what I tend to do is I tend to balance them in with the height of this. Obviously, the track's out, so it's brought this out a little bit more. So we're gonna just going to bring the spring length down onto the top of that roughly there and thereabouts as you can see and then if we brought the track back in so that's the rear track we want the front track you bring the track back in you can see it was scaling it so it's bringing it down a little bit and you just bring your spring height up again again to roughly around there and then the other thing we would need to do to central this one perfectly would be go to that front axle start and just bring it back a tad bit so it sits perfectly on the little platform the little raised platform it's got there and now it is you can see that is perfectly central and that has worked out fantastically with that spring setup for that particular car that's what the spring length does spring stiffness doesn't check a mess with anything visually as you can see it doesn't change anything we'll go on that we'll go front stiffness doesn't change how the spring looks or anything like that it just makes it so it's stiff on the track or drag strip or whatever it is you're racing the car around off-road you know higher number the stiffer it is lower number the looser it is i believe that's the way around i'm not 100 percent on that though but there we go that's enough playing around with the suspension for the time being we'll come back to some wheels a little bit later on the engine now i have had someone specifically ask how to add in the tk aftermarket engine to a config you want to work on and it really is very very simple we're on the engine screen if i click this little magnifying glass at the top you'll see we get the block outline of where the engine and all its components will sit within and then all you do is you go to this drop down menu here and you find the engine you want to put in it. It is really that simple. I have been asked it, but it is really that simple. A massive drop down box. You can see there's all my TK aftermarket engines. If I scroll to the top, we also have the Dead Bob V8 Voodoo engine and multiplies a couple of multiplies engines in there as well. But let's just go down. Let's say we want to stick in the LS 4x4 turbocharged aftermarket engine. And you can see what it's done in there. It's changed the outline of it because it's a whole new engine and obviously it probably won't fit well in the engine bay as it stands there. So then you're going to need your magnifying glass so that you can just move it around, you know, however you want. All these numbers here correlate. So, for example, X, as I'm changing it, you can see that first number changes and moves around. If I was to just zero that, it'll put it 
dead center of the car again. Uh, and then, then the next number is Y on this little green thing. You can see that that is up and down. If I move it up, it changes, down, it changes, so on and so forth. I wonder where zero is for height, probably way in the floor. So you don't want to do that. You want to find something that works for that. But obviously you can see because we're using the 4x4, that's clipping. So you'd have to play around with some more things. But you can do whatever you want. So you could put it far back. You can put it far forward. You can change the scale and make it absolutely massive. You can make it absolutely tiny. Don't see the point in that. But also if you do scale it down, you can see power, HP, 72 horsepower, scaled down. If I scale it all the way up, 229, I go massive. 668 that kind of thing we're just going to keep it at a scale of one because it's easier to work with when you're just playing around but anyway that's it if you want to add more engine to the engine options down here um, i believe you can just type the name in there obviously you don't want to be breaking anything but you can get it nice and easily from the drop down box the one in brackets is the one that you want to type in down there effectively the engine underscore i4 if i scroll up where is the i4 engine Engine underscore I4 is the I4 double over cam BFM engine. It is that simple. You can also do it in your config files if you want to. Let's just open that up again. I don't want to be in that one. I want to be in the normal config. So if I open config 2, you could be able to see somewhere in here. There is the engine options. There we go. Engine options. So the engine currently is the engine I4. And then you can type in your swap options here as well if you want to on there. Nice and simple. That is what we like. Back to the car editor engines. It really is that simple. Now, if you want to rotate the what engine have I got in there at the moment? The LA360. I'm loving that. Absolutely fantastic. But let's say I don't want it facing that way. I want it facing the other way. So you then start playing around with these. If I add 10 to that, you can see it angles the engine down. If I put a minus sign in front of that, it angles the engine backwards. And that's obviously scalable to whatever number you write in. So 90 degrees is straight up, obviously. We went 75, it's a bit less of an angle, 50, so on and so forth. Obviously, zero brings you back to a flat. On to the Y, the Y axis is left to right. So if you wanted it angled this way, for example, you would probably go minus 25. There you go, nice and simple. And again, just zeroing it brings it back to central. Z, we're just going to put 25 in here, rotates it side to side. Again, minus 25, we flip it around the other way. It really is that simple. Little bits of playing around with in the car editor. That's what we like. Now, my favorite part is parts. This is struggling to load, spinning back around. Very, very simple one to work with. Coolant reservoir. I'm going to click on it. You can see which one it is, but I'm going to click on it and it will outline it so you definitely know which one you are working on at the time. For example, if we click fuse box and spin around, it's on the other side. If we scroll down a little bit further, power steering reservoir, click on the magnifying glass, it's just in there. And that is the same for all of these parts. Washer reservoir, ECU, small intercooler, all of the exhaust, the air intake, brake pump, ABS, fuel tank, battery, and cooling, which is your radiator at the front there, as you can see it. Now, the principle to moving all of this is exactly the same. Let's just go back to our coolant reservoir. Nice and simple. You can use the arrows if you want to. Very easy to use. Again, you can use the numbers. It's very difficult, but you can just click and hold on the X and move it in that on the y move it like that or on the z and move it like that again same with the rotation 10 will give you a bit bit of an angle 50 will give you a that's so five. 50 or 550 will put it upside down that shouldn't exist 50 will give it a massive angle and again zero centers it again next number 50 is your rotation all the way around you can see it was set at 270 if i set it at zero I should put it sideways that kind of thing is very simple to play around with and then z again 25 is your tilt nice and easy you can also scale these parts so you can make a giant cooler if you wanted to, or you can also make one very, very tiny. They all still function the same way regardless of size. It's just wherever you want to place it. For example, if you wanted this one tucked in there, a very simple way to do that would just be to bring that all the way back. Uh, we'd probably want to rotate that the other way, wouldn't we? We're, we're going to reflect it. So I'm going to click the little reflection tick so that it mirrors it, and we'd be able to just tuck that one nicely into that spot there. Obviously, we'd have to move a few bits later on, and then lower it down, make sure it doesn't clip, things like that. But there you go. That's a nice little tucking spot for that one if you wanted to do that. And it's the same for all of these parts. They all move exactly the same way. You can remove parts by deleting them. Goodbye coolant reservoir. We've just deleted it. And then you can plus parts, add a new part in. You can see it's added it back into slot number zero. And then we just need to go find our coolant reservoir again and put you back in. That's a different one, but never mind. And then reposition it. Really is that simple.
enough of parts because it really is that simple again just lining things up moving backwards and forwards now bonus parts this is probably one of my favorite sections i absolutely love playing around with the bonus parts on this car we do have one bonus part already pre-installed and that is the trunk spoiler now if any of these from the drop down we're going to go to the top most of the normal parts are you see if it says hood it will be attached to the hood so whenever you open the hood it'll open it we don't have a hood on ours so we can't display it but this one on the spoiler we scroll all the way down to the bottom it says bonus trunk uh, in fact I'm just get rid of that bonus trunk spoiler one which means if we open the car it's connected to the spoiler and if you don't want that to ever happen you want to make it a roof piece because the roof pieces don't go anywhere but the functionality for moving them is exactly the same as everything else click the magnifying glass and you can move it free form with all the little arrows you can also move it with slides on the x the y and the z on there nice and simple and then obviously your rotation um, your first slot is how far back it leans or forward if you pick minus there we go uh, second one is its spin on its axis so if we made it 90 it would be a weird angle but it works 180 obviously pits it back we're going to pick that one just round to a zero and then z gives you tilt to the side not that i think you'd ever need that with a spoiler but if you're playing around with lots of bonus parts you definitely would also again scale it up and down and if you wanted to mirror it doesn't really matter with a spoiler so let's just swap it to something that does matter if we mirror it uh side pipe two there you go you see this side pipe two right now is mirrored with the exit there and then the intro there if we mirror it flips around to the other side it really is that simple with bonus parts i am just going to pick that back to the spoiler to make sure i don't break anything oh i've lost it there we go bonus spoiler one probably should reset all of that but i'm not going to i think that was at three and i think that was around one but it's not lined up we're not saving it anyway so it doesn't matter but there is bonus parts very simple to play around with nice and easy but now as you can see we're checking out the beautiful interior of the beautiful roadster and it is again very simple click on the interior option you've got all your seats available in a drop down menu if you do have bonus seats from bonus parts for example i have uh, multiplies uh, beautiful seats from the, they are using the tk aftermarket mod should i say they'll all be in there as well but we don't want to do that we just want to swap it back to the normal seat which is what uh, seat six lever b nice and simple let's find you seat six lever b there we go and now all you want to do is you, you know you can scale them you can move them these are pretty perfectly fitted but for example if i wanted to change it to the seat bandit you can see that that seat doesn't necessarily fit in there perfectly so you'd want to use your little magnifying glass just to reposition it a little bit so it sits a little bit more comfortably in the car you might want to scale it a little bit obviously that's pretty central so it lines up well with that we don't need to do that but you could scale it down obviously it scales both seats at the same time but you would want that anyway so let's just bring it down to 0.885 we're going to make the other seat the same which is the seat bandit where have you gone bandit there we go now they're the same place but they're at different positions so we now want a magnifying glass this one and bring that one back a little bit the other way you can do that is obviously i know that z is backwards and forwards so we're going to make them at the same place control c control v and now they're both at the same distance back and they're rescaled to fit in better with these particular seats and it's that simple you can just switch them around you can also rotate them if you really want to as you can see i'm putting a bit of tilt on that one I do the Y, it rotates it sideways, so you could do uh, 270 and make it face backwards. Be silly, but you could if you wanted to. That's not what I wanted. 90 is what I was after. 90 is what I was after. There we go. And then the Z gives you tilt forwards and backwards in there if you wanted to play around with that. Same principle for the bench at the back. Obviously, we don't have a bench in this car. And the same principle for the front bench if you did have a front bench. And the same principle for the beautiful steering wheel. You can just scroll through as many different steering wheels as you will like pick one you want and then you could focus on lining it up a little bit better with that you might want to scale it up a little bit so let's scale our wheel up i'm going to click on my magnifying glass i'm going to bring it down a little bit just so it fits better with the actual um bracket bits it sits on i don't know whatever you want to call it but there you go so you could scale that up massively we want to play with the wheels now you can do lots of things with the wheels on these builds we're going to start we're going to start with the front um you can yeah you can go crazy with this absolutely crazy one of the first things i'll point out is this is only available with the quality of life mod i believe unless it's been added into the normal game this sets your et how far your wheel sticks in and out from the base but it does it without moving that uh front drive set 
you know it all just stays exactly as it was you can't go too far 200 is the max you can do um on there and it will 200 let's put it up to 200 but there one thing you could do is you could then make the wheels really thin make them really big and make it like a wagon now i'm gonna do that front and rear let's get on with that and there we go. As you can see, it is a wagon wheeled FMW Roadster. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's crazy. But someone might actually want to do it. And if you do want to do it, good on you. I'd love to see the finished build almost look like it's got bicycle tires on there. You can still play around with this. For example, once you've set that up to be like that, you can go in to the suspension and have a jumpy game. And then you can bring the, like, the track out even further. So we brought the rear track out even further. Obviously, it will scale everything up on the inside, but it'll bring that wheel really, really far out. So you probably wouldn't want to do it with the rear track, but you might want to do it a little bit with the front track, obviously, to make sure that this beast can still turn. It's so already at the furthest out it will let you go with ET. So I'm just going to use the front track a little bit to bring this one out. As you can see, it's scaling everything. So that front shock is coming with me, and we can get rid of that just by bringing that front shock height down and hiding it away if we need to. But there we go. Now we should be able to get a little bit of turning going on with this. Obviously not full lock, but it's looking good nonetheless. But that's it. This has already gone on for way, way too long. This is meant to be like a 20-minute very quick video just to sort of show you a few little bits of how you can get started with the car editor making whatever you want. Now, once you've named your config, obviously I've just been messing around with the wrong one. You want to make sure you don't do that. You want to make sure you are on whichever one you have created specifically for it. And we'll go back to our VM edition. Obviously, we haven't got them weird wheels anymore because we didn't save it. But to save it, once you're on the right one and you've done what you need to do, you literally just hit save. And if you want to test your work, you can save it, hit reload config files, and it will load everything back in like it was. Now, one thing it doesn't like doing is with the tuning parts. This one doesn't have any, but it doesn't like doing it regardless. Uh, so if you, for example, if it did have them, we changed the rear bumper to three and then hit save and then reloaded it, that would actually reserve back to bumper number one and the way to do that to change it permanently is go into your body config file and then in here you would type in a bumper underscore rear that's not an underscore but you know what i mean underscore rear equals bumper underscore rear and then whatever number it was three and then you'd hit save on that and then you'd be able to go back and reload or exit and load back in if you're just on the normal one without the quality of life mod. And that is how you play around with the car register. Nice and simple. One of the reasons why I showed you the FMW Roadster today instead of any other car, and I regret my decision because it doesn't actually have any changeable parts, so it was a bad example, but it's because the new BMW DLC is coming out incredibly soon. And we're going to have a, well, we already have started a brand new competition on the Discord, link in the description below. Make sure you head over to the official Red Dot Games Discord server and take part in the competition because we have five, yes, five DLC codes to give away for the brand new BMW DLC when it comes out next week. Now, obviously, you want to get involved and get your entries in. We are going to be... Um, this is only going to be a very short, quick competition. It started yesterday and it's running for one week and one week only. One entry per person. Get onto the Discord or read all the rules. Get involved. You could win yourself a free copy of the BMW DLC the day it comes out. Who's not excited about that? I'm very much looking forward to the BMW DLC. I'm hoping you are as well. But there we go. A little quick, not so quick. I apologize about the length. But a little quick video of how to use the car editor. Rough examples. It was very quick going through it. If you want more in-depth, I'm sure you can find plenty of other videos on YouTube. But that's it. That's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helped you just a little bit. If it did, let me know in the comments below. Leave a cheeky little like. Make sure you are subscribed and share this video with anyone you think might find it helpful. And if you don't think anyone will find it helpful, please watch another one of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day, whatever it is you're getting up to. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Like and subscribe for virtual mechanics.